Hey, I'm Alan Brito, I'm an architect, and today I want to talk about angular dimensions in Blender. Whenever I have the opportunity to talk about precise 3D modeling in Blender, I like to introduce a few simple exercises so you can uh, try or uh, use uh, some of the resources, some of the tools from Blender to follow, for instance, a technical drawing like this one right here. This could be something that you uh, send to a 3D printer, a replacement part for a machine, anything like that. But uh, the challenge here is to try to replicate this in a blender with uh, no knowledge of a few of the dimensions here. As you can notice from this technical drawing, we know this dimension here, we know this one, and this one, but we have uh, we don't have any reference about this dimension, this one, and this one. This is a common type of exercise uh, that you find, for instance, in technical drawing classes. And let me show you the difference between executing this in Blender and in a CAD software. And today I'll be choosing QCAD. Let's change to QCAD. And here we are in a QCAD. Now, if you are not aware, QCAD is a free and open source alternative to AutoCAD. If you are trying to create 2D drawings or do uh, 2D drafting, you can use QCAD as an alternative for AutoCAD. I have here the professional version of QCAD. You can use this. Uh, one of the benefits of having the professional version of QCAD is to uh, write and read DWG files. If you are using the open source version, you can save DX, you can read and write DXF files, which work, uh, which uh, by the way, works great with Blender. Now, if we uh, want to create this drawing here, I will leave it open on the left as a reference. First thing that I'll be doing is to make sure I have the correct units uh, here in QCAD. I don't have any reference for this drawing, but I will assume it's uh, in millimeters. So here in QCAD, I'll go into the edit drawing preferences notes and uh, notice here that a QCAD has two different types of preferences. You have drawing preferences and application preferences. For this particular project, I will be making changes into the drawing preferences and under drawing unit, I will double check to see if I'm using millimeters, which is the current unit that I have. We are good. Just hit OK and we can start drawing. I won't be creating any layers or anything like that. Here I will start drawing. I will start with a line. You can use this menu here to start a line. Click anywhere to get started and press and hold the Alt key to enable the ortho mode here. This will create orthogonal lines in a uh, QCAD, press the space bar to type your distance. The first distance that we know is 40. I just created this first line. I will be creating this one right here now, 25. So press and hold the Alt key, type 25. Make sure you have your cursor here. Press and hold Alt, 25, enter. Now, we have to create this angle line. We have two options here in uh, QCAD. First one is to type a coordinate. If you press the space bar and type at, let's use a random distance, 50, less than in the angle that you want, 23. Press enter, you will create the line with the angle that you need. This is the notation that we use. This is a polar coordinate works the same way in AutoCAD, for instance, and on a rhinoceros. Another option, let me erase this. Another option is to use this line here with an angle, where you set the angle here, 23, and a random length, and you will be able to create your line like this. Press ESC to cancel. Now, we have to set a distance here with 35 millimeters, which is this distance right here. How can we do that? If you create a temporary line, press and hold the Alt key again, click anywhere, and you can use something like uh, an offset, 35, 
to this point here, just place your cursor above the line, move it to the side, and QCAD will make the offset. Now I can erase this line and I can use from QCAD the option to auto trim. Click on the segment that you want to keep and you just had yourself the line. Let's use this line here. I'll be making another 50, uh, 50 millimeters. But in this case, we need an angle of 52. Since QCAD will start count angles from this location here, we need to add 90. This is the angle that we need. Let's use here 90 plus 52. And QCAD will create the angle. And you just need now to finish your line by creating this segment. And you can use the auto trim to keep this one and keep this one. If you want to double check, you can add some dimension lines just to verify that everything matches. Let's use an horizontal dimension. And if you want to measure your angle, I will add some temporary lines here. And we can use the angular dimensions. And I can remove these lines here. Just did the shape in uh, QCAD. Now, can we replicate this workflow in Blender? Yes, let's take a look on how uh, I will do that in Blender. Now, here in Blender, I could just import that DXF that I just created in, in uh, QCAD, but what is the fun on that? Let's create this shape from scratch here in Blender. First thing I'll do here is to set my view to the top. Let's erase everything. And I will set here my units to millimeters. You can open your scene properties under units. Let's set the length to millimeters. And we can start uh, creating the same shape. Now I'll be using a single vertex uh, as, a, as a start. And if you are not following my previous tutorials, uh, this is from this add-on here called Extra Mesh Objects. You can install it from the Get Extensions. Just type here Extra and you will be able to install this add-on. It's free, it's part of the Blender Extensions repository. If you press Shift A and go under Mesh, Single Vert, you can add now a single vert. Again, this is from that add-on. And I can begin creating that same shape. Extrude Y, press the E key, the Y key, and I will type 40 or minus 40, minus 40. Let me press the home key, it's too small. And now I will press the extrude again, E key, X, and I will type 25. Now I have a few options here to create this angle line. You could uh, create, for instance, a segment and rotate that 23 degrees, but I'll be using PDT for that. PDT is great for this type of drawing. PDT is a free add-on. You can install that from the Blender extensions repository as well. And uh, to start with PDT here, I will choose top as my working plane. And I want to create, follow a similar uh, workflow that I did with uh, QCAD. Let's use a random distance like 50 millimeters and for the angle 23. And for the select operation, I will choose extrude geometry. Now, if I press this direction button, it will create the extrude with a 23 degrees with the X axis. We can uh, double check this later. Now, I have to mark 
that location i need 35 millimeters from this uh, from this point here from this point and to do this i will create a temporary edge and to help me mark the location that i need to create an intersection here we can enable the auto merge and split edges it will find an intersection so i will create an extrude here y and i can select this edge shift d x and i will type 35 enter and if you enable this option it will create an intersection where i will be able to erase everything that i don't need here select this vertex go back to pdt and i can use an angle here following a similar workflow from qcad i need 52 degrees but i will sum that with 90 degrees press the direction button it will create the edge and you can now just extrude this on the x-axis and I will erase everything that I don't need anymore. If you want to double check the distances, I can measure, for instance, here with the measure tool, 40 millimeters. I can measure this one here, 25. I can measure this distance here. Let me press the X key. 35 and if you want to measure the angles let me create this line here i need a, uh, a reference object here just to create place it here shift the x just to place you see 23 degrees and you can do the same here for this angle let me create just a quick temporary object here and fifty-two degrees now if i was supposed to send this to a 3d printer i'm ready to Create a face with the F key, extrude, use an inset, keep modeling because I do have now the base shape with the correct uh, length and dimensions from my reference drawing. And this is it. You now know how to use angular dimensions or at least follow this simple tutorial here in uh, Blender. What would you do different? What other technique would you use to create this, uh, this shape here in Blender? Many people will say, well, I will never use Blender for that, but where is the fun? If you want to keep learning about a precise 3D modeling in Blender, don't forget, I have this workshop here, Blender Precise 3D Modeling. I will leave links in the description. It will support my work here in Blender 3D Architect. And I just updated uh, the Beta Learning website with, my, uh, with one of my books, which is the exact same content from the workshop. It's this one right here. I have this book with uh, many different translations, four translations, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, in the page, you will be able to download sample pages, uh, get the project files, and take a look into the table of contents. Everything here will be in the, in the description with uh, links. Again, I hope you like this tutorial. If you want to keep, uh, if you want to see more tutorials or keep up with more tutorials about precise 3D modeling with Blender, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Bye.